we're looking at the structure of deoxyribonucleic acid also known as DNA so this is like we said this is a type of this is a type of nucleic acid this is the one that obviously we're most interested in but there's another one called RNA we'll meet in a little while this is deoxyribonucleic acid and the structure of it like we said nucleotides 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 are the subunit and nucleotides consist of three parts they consist of a sugar it's a deoxyribose sugar but it's a five carbon sugar ribose sugars so the main thing is that it's a sugar it consists of a, a phosphate group and we meet phosphate groups when we look at the formation of ATP for example and it also uh, consists of a base now bases nucleotide bases there are four different types so um, bases come in four different varieties they come in, in the form of adenine adenine which is A it comes in the form of guanine which is we'll use the letter G to signify comes in the form of cytosine cytosine which is C funnily enough and then we'll have thymine which is going to be signified by a T so they're the four different bases of DNA now just as we're here just one thing you do need to know is that these two here uh, adenine and guanine they are what we call purines so just put that in um, they are purines purines and these two here the cytosine and thymine they are collectively known both of those are known as pyrimidines pyrimidines now that's just technical information that unfortunately you do have to know what's a little bit more interesting then is the fact that as we said DNA is a double stranded molecule um, so as we draw the structure you'll see how these A's, G's, C's and T's how they relate to each other uh, and how it's important how they're so important in, uh, in the structure of DNA we'll also see how it is that these A's, G's, C's and T's how this code, these letters uh, this string of A's, uh, adenines, guanine, cytosine and thymines that make up DNA how they can how could they, could they could possibly code for the production of a protein? The stretches of DNA that we call genes, that the genes are areas of DNA or parts of our DNA that code for protein, and that's what gives us our characteristics. Okay, so let's look at the structure then. So, structure of DNA. How to draw it. Um, the first thing we'll do is we'll draw what's known as the sugar phosphate backbone of, of one of the strands of DNA. So we'll draw one strand at a time. P is going to signify this phosphate. I said that it consists of a phosphate and a sugar and a base. So we'll start off by drawing a phosphate um, then is linked as we said to sugar. So the sugars are as we said they're linked they're, they're, called, they're uh, five carbon deoxyribose sugars. So this is a five carbon sugar. There's an S and we said that each nucleotide consists of a phosphate and the sugar, we've got two parts, and the third part is this base that needs to be put in. So we'll put in um, a base in purple here. So we'll pick one of our four types of bases, and just to start off we'll put in uh, an adenine. So we'll put an A in for adenine. So now we have a nucleotide. This is uh, uh, the, the three different components of a nucleotide. We need to, when we're drawing a structure of DNA, you need to really draw, and they'll probably tell you explicitly, and they need to draw three um, nucleotides. It needs to be three nucleotides long, each strand. Now remember, we're just starting off with one strand. So we'll, we'll draw then the second, um, the second nucleotide, which consists of a phosphate, which is linked to the, the sugar of the first nucleotide. And that, in, its, in, in turn, of course, is going to be linked to another sugar. So we'll put in another sugar there. And that in turn is going to be linked to another um, phosphate. So we we'll put in yet another phosphate. Yes. What we've done here is the sugar phosphate backbone of one of the strands of DNA. 
So this is what we call this phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar on the outside of one of the strands of DNA is what we call is what we call a phosphate sugar backbone. Now, like we did say though, that each of these sugars, so phosphate sugar, each of these sugars, these three sugars in our in our chain, is in, is linked to, like we did in the first nucleotide, is linked to a base. So we put adenine A as our first base. Now let's put in another base, um, and we'll put it in. We'll put in different colors for these bases. Um, so the next one we'll put in as um, a G. And the next one we'll put in as um, a C. Okay. So let's draw the second strand. What's important about these other strands is that they are uh, not only are they complementary, you can see how that works in a second, but they're, they actually are orientated in the opposite direction. Now, just kind of signify that in our simplified version of DNA. We'll draw our sugar phosphate backbone of the next one. Um, from the opposite direction. So we'll start off with a sugar with a phosphate here. Um, so we'll draw our phosphate here. Uh, and then we'll draw a sugar on top of it. So sugars uh, like so. And so on. Each sugar then will be linked to a base. So I'm just drawing the three sugars in the row just to speed things up a little bit. Uh, in between the sugars, of course, there's a phosphate. I'll just draw these phosphates. And we're not going to draw another phosphate up here because we're trying to show that this is the uh, corresponding strand and it's going in the opposite direction. So that's why I've drawn it like this. Okay, from each sugar then, we need to have complementary bases. And what I haven't said to you so far is that there's a base pair rule, so I'm going to write that in a little box over here. Um, the base pair rule, base pair rule, base pair rule consists of the fact that A's are always bonded to T's. These little little double lines I put in here, these are bonds. These are in fact hydrogen bonds and adenine bonds to thymine with a double hydrogen bond, so hence the two little dashes. As opposed to guanine, G, which bonds with a triple bond to cytosine. And this is the base rule. This is always the way. This is how, how strands of DNA, uh, opposite strands of DNA, complement each other and bind to each other. So we'll just, we realize we put in A, G, and C on our first strand, so we need to put in complementary bases on the opposite strand. So we'll pick, um, we've already, we need a T, so we'll put in uh, a yet another color. I'll use uh, this brown here for T. So T is bonded, as we said, I'll put in these, these um, double bonds. So there's a double hydrogen bond in between A and T. And then similarly, between the G, which, which is our next one, G is going to be complemented to C. And C we put in, in this, whatever you call that, cyan or something. So we'll put that in as a C. And that needs to be bonded with a triple bond. So we signify that again with our three lines. This is a... Oh, this is our, our triple bond, triple hydrogen bond, and that shows that there's a uh, it shows the bond between guanine and cytosine. Okay, just to finish this off, this cytosine is linked to the sugar. <coughs> okay, so lastly, then this sugar here, the last final sugar on our second strand needs to be linked with this cytosine and we do that by putting it in with the, the guanine so I'll just put in that guanine there so a guanine goes in here a big G linked to the sugar and then as we've done before we've got a triple bond triple hydrogen bond between cytosine and between guanine so this is a double strand of DNA you can need to do a couple more things if you're going to do this uh, in, a, in an exam or a test, if you're fully going to answer this question properly, you need to 
uh, have some more labels. So we'll just finish it off by saying that um, the putting in a little sort of a legend where we say s is equal to equal to a deoxyribose sugar, deoxyribose sugar, deoxyribose sugar. Um, we also need to put in the fact that uh, P is a phosphate, so a red P. This is, instead of labeling, it just makes more sense. This is a phosphate. Um, we'll also put in uh, the four bases, so put those in. Uh, A equals adenine. Um, T is equal to thymine. Cytosine and finally G, then G is guanine. And the last thing we need to do, and it's important to just to show the last couple of things we need to do. <coughs> the first thing is to put in a little dotted line. Um, so just here. Oh, sorry. So it needs to be a line along here. Uh, and that shows that you can now draw in um, the fact that this is strand one and this is strand two. Okay, and final thing then, as I said, it's a good idea to just square off one nucleotide. You can maybe do this with a ruler, it'd be much nicer. Uh, square off what constitutes a nucleotide. So you can just label like this. Okay, so that's the structure of DNA. Uh, 